Hey there guys, this is Kamikaze Ikun here, and today I'm uh, responding to a challenge issued by my good friend Sam from Contagious Collection. Uh, he had asked us what our favorite game series was and why that was. Um, now, I had a lot to think about when asked this question because I really enjoy a lot of different series, uh, many of those being Castlevania, Devil May Cry, Street Fighter, and the list goes on and on and on. Uh, but one series that I, you know, couldn't stop thinking about when discussing these different series, uh, of course, was uh, Final Fantasy. Now, with me today, I'm going to show you um, every single game that I have for this series and uh, just discuss a little bit about that. And, um, well, you know what? Let's get started and uh, I'll let you guys see what games I have. Now, the first game, uh, as we all know, was Final Fantasy on the NES. Now, I did not initially play this game when it first came out. Um, you know, back when the NES was relevant, uh, the games we had were ones like Mario, Zelda, Kirby, um, nothing really outside of that though, and uh, I didn't get to play this game till much later on, I would say about five, six years ago. Um, it still holds up though, it's still an incredible game. Um, unfortunately, it's not my most uh, not the game I'm most fond of as far as uh, the NES, but it's still a really good game and a lot of the uh, staples that are in that game are still being used in the series to this day. Now the next game, this one I am not really a fan of. Um, well, I'll show it to you guys. That is Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. Now, if uh, say you're new to RPGs, uh, this is a pretty good segue into that. Um, outside of that though, I just can't get into this game. I mean, it's just, it's very basic. It looks really nice, it plays really well, and um, you know, it has a lot of the same qualities as you would really expect from Final Fantasy, but you know, when people talk about games that hold your hand through the game, uh, this one should definitely have a mention because it really does hold your hand throughout the game. Now this next stack of games, this first one I have, is uh, it's a compilation disc, uh, and this is something that PlayStation did. Uh, when the PlayStation was around, uh, they had released a couple Final Fantasy games of their own, and then they went back and they remade a few of them. Uh, this first disc is uh, Final Fantasy Origins, and this includes Final Fantasy 1 and 2. Now, these games were remade. They have more of a 16-bit uh, style to them as opposed to the 8-bit um, originals on the NES and the Famicom. Uh, I really like some of the improvements that these games made, too. Uh, there was a couple problems I had with the original Final Fantasy where, like, say you were to cast a spell and attack like one enemy and say first time they died and you still have a group of enemies like say for example that same attack would not be able to be used you know on a different enemy so to speak um i just confused myself i apologize <laughs> but you know i do like these and honestly I do prefer these games over the, uh, well, this one in particular, Final Fantasy 1, I do prefer this version over the NES. Now this next one is uh, Final Fantasy Chronicles. Now this includes Final Fantasy 4, and it also includes Chrono Trigger, which I thought was pretty awesome. Uh, Final Fantasy 4, I really didn't get into, well, then again, I really didn't get into Final Fantasy until around the time the PlayStation came out. Um, I did play 4, though. I do enjoy it. It's not exactly my favorite game, though, but 
for what it is, I would really enjoy being able to play this on the Super Nintendo someday uh, when I do end up finding that cartridge. And, I mean, just as a side note, Chrono Trigger is awesome no matter which console you play it on. Uh, do play that game. That game is an amazing RPG and almost everybody I have spoken to about that game will absolutely love it. Now this uh, last one in the um, in this trilogy is Final Fantasy Anthology. Now this uh, came with Final Fantasy V, which was never released here in the United States, so it was really cool to see what games we did not get. And it also included Final Fantasy VI. Now, most people know this, but when it came to numbering these games, uh, the United States didn't necessarily do the best job uh, because Japan, for some reason, just did not port over every single Final Fantasy game originally. Um, what we consider Final Fantasy II here, technically in Japan, was Final Fantasy IV. And Final Fantasy III here in the United States was considered Final Fantasy VI over in Japan. And after VI, they did fix that problem. <laughs> but both of these are amazing games, especially V. If you've not yet played V, I implore you to play that game. That is one of my I want to say, I, I consider that one of my top five favorite Final Fantasy games of all time. It is really good. It introduces the job system, which um, allows you to pretty much customize each individual character, uh, bring traits from one class over to the other. It's a lot of fun, and like I said, it was a great game, and I, you know, especially if you're into games like Final Fantasy Tactics, this one should be right up your alley. Okay, so this next stack of games is another set of PlayStation 1 uh, Final Fantasy games as well. The first one being my favorite Final Fantasy game of all time was Final Fantasy 7. I love this game. I don't care what anyone else says about this game. This to me was my segue into Final Fantasy and even to this day I still consider it the best Final Fantasy game of the series. Um, nine comes very close, but upon replaying this again, there, are, you know, every it feels like every time I play this game, I find out something new. I find out more about just the game in general, and you know, I rediscover my love for this game. And again, I don't care what anyone else says about Final Fantasy VII. This is an amazing game. If you have not yet played it, I don't know what the hell you're doing. Go play Final Fantasy VII. It is incredible. Next we have a game that I am not a fan of. Um, now, let me give you, well, let me, let, me, let me show you the game first of all. And that game is Final Fantasy VIII. Uh, some of the positives I can say about it is I really enjoyed the story. I do like the more um, realistic style that they used with the game. Um, you know, they were trying to go for more of a technical style with more, you know, like Final Fantasy 7 and 8. And it looks beautiful. It is a very, very beautiful game. Even to this day, it is completely enjoyable and it is something you should experience, but with a bit of caution because uh, one of my biggest complaints about this game is the battle system. Well, just really the gameplay in general. Uh, I just, I do not like the combat system for many reasons. Uh, having to draw magic and then having to junction that magic and not being able to use that magic unless you want to go back through the game and find those exact magic draw points in order to bring your stats back up. I did not like that idea whatsoever. There is a lot of backtracking you will have to do in this game. Um, the other problem I had with this was the summons. Uh, one of my biggest complaints too about this game, and I think this um, this really cemented it in, is they really, really try to make you use those summons. And the problem I have with them is a lot of them have like from a minute to about three minute long animation sequences every single time so you know a battle that could end within you know 
30 seconds ends up taking you at least four to five minutes and it just it feels like it drags on and on and on and I mean like I said I really enjoyed the story and I really enjoyed like how like I don't want to give away too much, but there are two stories that intertwine in certain parts of this game, and I think that was really, really uh, ambitious of Square to do at the time. And to make matters, well, I don't necessarily want to make them worse, but this was my first Final Fantasy game that I had experienced, so, you know, I didn't necessarily have a great time, I didn't have a great first impression of the series. And like I said, it wasn't until Final Fantasy VII when I really started getting into the series. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. But, <coughs> you know, I really didn't start getting into it around until that point because I just, I don't know, I just did not really enjoy playing 8. Now this next one, I have a lot to say about this game and that is Final Fantasy IX. Uh, this is a very good runner-up for me for Final Fantasy VII. It goes back to the Crystal series, so a lot there's going to be a lot more familiarity for players that are more used to the original Final Fantasy games. And I love the story in this game. This probably has a... I, I feel this one has a better story than even Seven. Like, I love the, you know, the theme of, like, self-discovery and... Overall, it's just an amazing game. Uh, this is definitely another one, uh, especially for newcomers to the series. I would suggest playing that one first, even more so over than Mystic Quest. Anybody could play Mystic Quest. I'll, I'll be honest, you know, it's not a great game. You know, if you have like a five year old and you just want to give them something to play, go for Mystic Quest. But if you really want to experience a truly awesome game, I would definitely recommend playing Final Fantasy IX first and then maybe jumping to 7 and 5. So this last game for the PlayStation 1 and unfortunately is not complete would be Final Fantasy Tactics. Now this is another one I poured hundreds of hours into. I love this game. I, you know, and this was a game that at the time got me into uh, strategy RPGs. It has a really fun system, and uh, like I had mentioned before, it had you know inter you know it didn't introduce a job system, but it utilized it, and you could you know customize units, um, and it just it, overall it was a great game. And I remember I poured God knows about 300 hours at least into that game. So this next stack of games is uh, for the PSP. Uh, the first one I have is um, the re-release of Final Fantasy Tactics War of the Lions. Uh, this is essentially the same thing as Tactics. I believe it has a few different classes though and it does have some different animated cutscenes. Um, I also believe, if I'm not mistaken, it did support uh, two players um, over, you know, two separate PSPs obviously, but that was a really neat addition, and I mean, I never utilized it when I had this at the time, but I always thought that was really cool that, you know, it felt like a lot of games made for the PSP were somewhat just, you know, re-releases for the PS1, but with like additional features added to it. Now this next game, to me, was the reason why I bought the PSP in the first place, and that would be Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core. I love this game. Um, it is a prequel to Final Fantasy VII, and overall, this is a beautiful story, uh, especially if you want to know what happened to some of these characters before the game had actually started. Uh, this does give some uh, explanation towards certain characters, smaller, small, smaller characters like the Turks. Zack being the protagonist, you get to learn more about him, you get to learn Sephiroth's backstory, and they have a few new additional characters that I thought were really cool, like Genesis and Angeal. Uh, this is a great game though, and if you have a PSP, I urge you to pick this game up. It is really awesome. Now these last two games, uh, they did a, it's kind of like a pseudo fighting game series 
based on characters from Final Fantasy and um, what was called Dissidia and I have here Dissidia and Dissidia 012 they had some really weird titles for these games um, and they're not your typical fighting games though and you know they they did get panned at first and I actually enjoy them um, but I would not expect them to play like, like I said typical fighting games but they are a lot of fun uh, they are two-player compatible as well, so I mean you could play them with a friend. And overall, I mean they just pretty much span through um, what was pretty much from the beginning of the Final Fantasy series up till that point when those games were made. So this next stack of games here, the first one, in no particular order, uh, I have for the GameCube is Final Fantasy Chronicles. Uh, this game, it's a Return to the Crystal Chronicles. Uh, they did not have any numbered Final Fantasy games on the GameCube, unfortunately, but they did have this. It is, uh, like I said, it's a four-player game that supports the Game Boy Advance, which I thought was pretty awesome. Um, I haven't poured too much time into this. I just recently picked up another uh, Game Boy Advance link cable so my daughter and I could play this and enjoy this together so you know I may talk about this game in the future but as of right now I've maybe done at least a couple hours into this game but what I've seen I mean I thought this was a really beautiful game even now it looks really good uh, this next game is Final Fantasy X now this is when they started using actual voice actors in their games and I thought this was a really awesome title too. Uh, it uh, used, I believe it was called the spear system when it came to leveling your characters and at first I was a bit confused and overwhelmed by it but after playing this for at least a good I would say five to six hours you do get used to this and it does seem intimidating at first, but overall I thought this was also a really good entry into the series. Now this next one, I have nothing to say about it because, uh, well this is Final Fantasy XI. I picked this up right around the time the online servers had ended. Uh, the only thing I had ever seen of this was gameplay on YouTube, screenshots, so I don't have much to say about this, unfortunately, but I did get it for a couple dollars, so I figured why not add it to the collection. Uh, this next game I did pour some time into, and that is Final Fantasy XII. Uh, this one, again, uses somewhat of a different leveling system, and I think Square around this time was just experimenting with what they could do and what could work with their games. Um, they were trying to change things up because a lot of Final Fantasy games up till this point uh, kind of used the same uh, leveling structure, uh, development structure, and I can understand what they were trying to do. Uh, this one, you know, tried something different. Uh, I believe it did get panned a bit, but I also really enjoy this game. Um, you know, it takes place, I believe, in the same universe as the uh, Final Fantasy Tactics series. Uh, but the characters do, like, some of the more familiar characters do look a lot different, which kind of threw me off at first, but after a while, you do kind of get used to it. And, I mean, it's a kind of a refreshing take on it. Now, this last one I have on the PlayStation 2, I just recently picked up, and I've been wanting this game for a very long time, and that is Final Fantasy VII Dirge of Cerberus. Uh, this takes place after Final Fantasy VII, and I believe it's after the movie Advent Children. It's based on a story of uh, Vincent Valentine, who is the protagonist. Um, if you're a fan of games like Devil May Cry, this will be right up your alley as it plays a lot like that. It's, I wouldn't necessarily say it's an RPG, but it's still an incredible game. It was a lot of fun. I'm almost through this game too. 
I had spent quite a bit of time playing this when I had first picked it up because I was waiting for the remake to come out and needed something to do. Okay, so let's check this stack of games here. Now, the one game I have for the Wii, it's called Final Fantasy Echoes of Time. Uh, this was originally on the Nintendo DS, and it, it I, I, I don't necessarily know a whole lot about uh, this game in general. Um, I also have, it was kind of like a companion piece to this on the DS, but I don't have them both on one consecutive system. Uh, now this one, um, I mean, it looks beautiful, don't get me wrong. It, it is very basic. It is not my favorite Final Fantasy game, and as a matter of fact, I mean, this might be down there with uh, Mystic Quest, but I do have all three of the titles for Final Fantasy 13 because for some reason they needed to make three of these. Um, like I said, it's a beautiful game and I mean there was a lot of controversy on this because there was supposed to be a Final Fantasy 13 versus as well which most of us know ended up becoming Final Fantasy 15 so it became you know its own numbered game of its own but I just did not like the world. I did not like the characters, and I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's down there in my ranking. It's not necessarily, like I said, it's not necessarily my favorite game. And that could be said about some of these titles as well. You know, I mean, you could have some that you absolutely love, and there are some that are just like, oh, I could have passed up on that one. <laughs> And, like I said, 13, eh, I don't know. De it, it definitely has that vibe, but I could have passed on this one, and I would have been fine. So these next three games I have, let's see if I have these in any particular order. Okay, this is the other part of Echoes of Time, and that is uh, Final Fantasy Rings of Fate. Uh, like I said, this is the DS version. Um, I haven't, like I said, I have not gotten to really get into these games, and I feel like I should at some point just to see what these games were like. But this next one, yes, I did pour some time into. It's a, it's another tactical game, and it's Final Fantasy XII: um, Revenant Wings. This one was really good too. Um, like I said, if you're into another tactical RPG that isn't Final Fantasy Tactics, uh, this one does introduce a few new things and it's a pretty good game. Uh, then I finally managed to find myself a copy of Final Fantasy 3. So now I have every numbered game other than Final Fantasy Type 0 which is another one I am currently looking for. Now, this was a very odd game that I had found uh, for the 3DS, and I don't necessarily remember there being a whole lot of Final Fantasy games made for that uh, handheld, but this one is called Theater Rhythm Curtain Call Final Fantasy. Am I getting that right? I don't know. It's just, it's a, it's a rhythm game based on the music of Final Fantasy. Not much to really say about this game. I picked it up on the cheap. I thought it looked kind of cool. I've played it. I'm not the biggest fan, I'll be honest. The only thing I ever play on this is One Winged Angel. That's it. <laughs> now, this last stack of games here, I have Final Fantasy II and Final Fantasy X II. Uh, for the PSP. Now, contrary to belief, I actually enjoyed Final Fantasy X 2 a lot more than X, and I really liked how they had changed things up. They had distributed your abilities based on the outfit that you wore. Um, they simplified things a little bit more, and overall, I really enjoyed the story a lot more in that game than I did in Final Fantasy X. Okay, then we have 
the third of this series. Uh, it's just called Dissidia. I don't know. And Dissidia NT or TN. I have no idea. They just they keep they keep it rolling with all these really weird names for these games. Uh, this one's actually really cool though, especially seeing how it's PS4. It looks really nice and. Especially if you are, you know, playing, you know, some of your favorite characters in this game. Uh, it can be a lot of fun. It is very, um... In order to unlock anything, either you're going to need to have some money, though, unfortunately. Because they do lock a lot of things behind paywalls or, you know, play the game for a very long, like, very ungodly long amount of time. Uh, I was not particular. I was not particularly a fan of this game, but I can see where it has, you know, its fans and why people would enjoy it, though. Now, this, unfortunately, I only have loose. Um, I do plan on picking up a complete copy of this at some point, but that is Final Fantasy XV. And this one, I mean, I did put some time into, and again, this is not one of my favorite games. It's good, but, you know, it to me just did not feel like I was playing Final Fantasy. And to some people, that might be a good thing, but, you know, I like a little bit of familiarity in these titles because that's what I've, you know, become accustomed to. And I just, I did not like the combat system. I didn't really care for the story. Um, like I said, I do like the modern Final Fantasy games. I'm not against that at all, but... This one just, I don't know, it just didn't do it for me. And now this last game in my collection, you had, you guys had previously seen me unboxing this game. And this is one of the, what I consider a system seller on the PS4. And that is Final Fantasy VII Remake. I, I'll be honest, I actually prefer the original over this game. And I'll give you the reason why, because it I didn't really get to talk about this like after I had beaten this game, and I had really wanted to. Um, one of my biggest problems with this game is the fact that they just... I, I, I like the idea that they're adding more depth to these characters in the game, and, you know, bringing out more features of these characters. But then they're adding more story to this game that I just feel is completely unnecessary and almost feels like just filler just to you know make this game seem like it's longer than what it really is um, and I really was not a huge fan of the fetch quests um, there are a lot of times where they were like oh well go find these orphans go find five different flowers go rescue these cats. I'm like, you know, I can understand there being these kinds of things in an RPG, but this one seems to have an abundance of that. And it just really feels like they're just really trying to stretch this game out. And a lot of it just got annoying after a while. Don't get me wrong though, it's a beautiful game. I really enjoyed the story. And I love the character development in this game. Like, there was a lot more character development in this than there was in the original, and that's something I have to give it credit for. It was really good at doing that. And to be honest, this would be a great game for someone that just got into Final Fantasy, wanted to experience Seven, but, you know, was turned off by uh, just how the game looks, and I can say, you know, I can honestly say, you know, 7 does not look the best. You know, if you grew up with the game, I can understand that, you know, it is, you know, it's very nostalgic, but to somebody just getting into Final Fantasy 7, it might turn them off. Um, one of those people being my daughter, of course, who actually just started playing this game, and within the last two days is almost 75% through the 75% um, done with the game and that's just because she skipped all these extra bonus fetch quests she just one wanted to get through the story whereas me I wanted to literally experience everything just in case you know I would end up missing something that I would just 
absolutely regret, but, you know, I had spent, I want to say, at least a good, at least 30 hours on this game. And that's one other thing I really do have a problem with this game is I feel like in the combat, like in the, um, like in the gameplay, they really hold your, I feel like they hold your hand in this game. And there aren't that many areas where you could learn to grind a character and level up your materia and stuff like that. And that, again, that was something, to me it felt like that was part of the original experience that they kind of just, you know, tucked away in certain places. Like, you can grind in certain areas, like in the Don Corneo uh, arena, but overall, that's about it. So, that's my, you know, Final Fantasy collection, guys. Um, and yes, this is my favorite series. And, you know, I am absolutely fond of all the memories I have with these games. And, you know, considering that, you know, they're still making these to this day, uh, really does say something about just how beloved this is. So, thank you for issuing this challenge, uh, Sam. And if you guys haven't yet, uh, do check out the channels I have uh, posted here on the top left of the screen. Uh, that would be totally awesome. Uh, and do consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, I, am ha I am having a uh, Switch Lite Animal Crossing giveaway as well, so um, links to that will be down below in the description. And thank you again for staying till the end of the video, and until next time guys. Thank you for watching.